My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Lord, it is good to be here. You can hear the exultation, the yearning, the desire in the Apostles' voice when they cry out with joy at the sight that they behold. Here God is transformed before them. God and all his radiant glory. And here before them they see the fulfillment of all the law and prophets with Moses and Elijah standing on either side. This is the moment that they had been waiting for. And as soon as they experience it, it all vanishes. Today's gospel is a gospel of contrasts. On the one hand, we have this great joy, this incredible sight, and even in our liturgy, everything is reflected. There's white, there's gold. It's amazing. But no sooner do we hit the mountaintop than we are brought down. And we hear the suffering. This gospel actually seems to be perfect for this week. Over the past few weeks, we've suddenly started to feel this joy. COVID is easing. People are starting to come alive again. The days are getting longer. We're starting to feel the joy and hope that something good may be upon us. And no sooner do we get there than we hear of bombs and missiles landing on one of Europe's largest countries. Lord, why? I don't know about you, but for me this week, that has been the experience. Why do you give us a hope only to drop us down? Why? The Feast of the Transfiguration is but a foretaste of what is to come. In the Christian tradition, we believe that we are walking through what is known as the Paschal Mystery, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that all of our lives are shaped by that. All of us will go through moments of great joys to great lows, but we do so knowing that there will always be resurrection, no matter how bad things may seem. And so the church, in planning the liturgical year, puts before us the Feast of Transfiguration just before we enter into the long days of Lent. By doing so, the church says, look, this is our goal. Don't have fear. Know that God's glory will ultimately reign. No matter how bad things may seem or how awful they may become for us, in the end, we shall taste and stand before the glory of God. And as a church, we need to remember this. We are to embody the hope of God in all we do, in our ministry. And in fact, now more than ever before in history, I think the church has a role to proclaim hope, freedom, and joy for all God's people. All God's people. We are to be the very body, the presence of Jesus Christ in this world, pointing to people to the glory of God and reminding them that no matter how bad things may be, God 
will ultimately reign glorious. A key point in this story that we have to hold on to is this. They encountered the glory of God in prayer. And this is something that we cannot miss. It's something that we as a church have to learn. That if we are to be the very body, the living presence of Jesus Christ in this world, we too need to set ourselves in prayer before the living God. If the radiant grace of God is to shine through our lives and through our work and through our ministry, we have to stop and pray. And again, now more than ever, the world needs us to enter into that depth of prayer, to lift up all God's suffering and entrust them unto the living God and say, transform them as you did your son once so long ago on a mountaintop. This ought to be our vision as a church. As we gather together this afternoon to reflect on the year past and to look on the year ahead, how will we, in our ministry, radiate the glory and beauty of God. Amen.